A lot of thought, a lot of passion, a lot of dedication. Tonight's the night. We're going to tell everybody what masonry is about. And the New York Grand Lodge and everyone around the world is going to be able to see us. Because right now, it is showtime. Let's go. <clears throat> Yes, it is showtime. My name is Bill Sardone. I'm the Grand Master of Masons in the state of New York, and welcome to our first live telethon for the Grand Lodge of the state of New York. I'm coming to you live from Utica, New York, in our Masonic Care community. We will periodically be switching back and forth to our Masonic Hall at 23rd Street, but we have a room full of individuals who will also want to be online and be able to make donations to our cause. Masonry's been on here for 300 years, and you probably know our men best for those of, of what they have done in society, communities, and in our lodges. Tonight you're going to hear things about research, you're going to hear things about caring for others, you're going to hear things about our youth. But to, for now, we are going to move on and let you know that we're not here just for donations of money. We are here for also the awareness of all the great things that our Masonic fraternity does, not only here in New York, but around the world. Behind me, there's individuals who are more than willing to take your calls of pledges and or checks through credit cards. We have people watching social media on Facebook and YouTube to see what's going on and see how we're being reacted to. We know that we're being watched by everybody around the world. This is not just here in New York. We know that we are globally accessible for what everybody wants to look at and what they do. We will be taking calls throughout the evening. We will be taking calls for raise money for the good causes that we do. One of the many causes that we have, as everyone knows, at the Masonic Care community here is our greenhouse. And at this time, I have a young man here who knows more about the greenhouse than I do. We're going to switch over to him now and ask him a few questions. My pleasure now to be here with Bob Butler. Bob Butler is a director here at the Masonic Care community. Bob, do me a favor, give us a quick overview of what our greenhouse project is going to look like. Great, Master, thank you uh, for the opportunity and thanks for coming to Utica as you so often do. Uh, we're gonna have a greenhouse under construction probably by June. Uh, we're gonna have uh, an aeroponics greenhouse. We're gonna have an organic greenhouse. We're gonna have an area for uh, farmer's market. But we're gonna have about a 4,500 foot greenhouse that's gonna have aeroponics, hydroponics, and as well as dirt plant. Excellent. I believe that there's also going to be some rehabilitation opportunities here for uh, those for physical as well as mental rehabilitation as well that can be utilized? Without a doubt. Well, we're going to have our seniors. We're going to have our young people involved. We're going to have intergenerational programs. We could have a ladies club. We could have a men's club. We could have anybody that wants to do a little research. Um, this is going to be a campus-wide thing. This is not just for me to grow some flowers. This is for the entire community to get involved. Bob, this is excellent. Uh, do you have a video or anything on this? I think we have a video. Does anybody have a video they can show us about this so we can get a better idea? Let's see if we can put that up. You know what, that, uh, that, that's just a piece of what we're going to be looking at. This weekend we had a dedication of a cornerstone for the greenhouse. And while some people were here, they made some donations. We have some of them on videotape now. Let's take a look at them. Okay. 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 
Webster, on behalf of the brothers of the Orange Rockland okay, Sullivan okay, District, okay. I'd like to present you a total of $705, which has been raised from uh, donations for pins and other charitable donations. There will be more to follow when the rest of the lodges send in their donations. Very, very nice. I want to thank you very much. You know, the work that you're doing is going to be very beneficial. Every dollar you raise will help with this greenhouse and all the projects that we do here. Rehabilitation will be priceless. Thank you so much. You're terrific. Thank, thank, you. thank you all the members in your district as well. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Most, speak a little louder. Let's do it. Thank you very much. Most worship for all your uh, um, the great things you're doing, and we look forward to giving this uh, check to the uh, uh, greenhouse project for the community care. Thank you so much. Was this filled out with Ken's pen? Yes, it was. It was really? From Wadsworth Lodge, which is my home lodge, and they have. It. So very nice. deputy has pens he, that he hands out. His name happens to be Ken, so he hands out Ken's pens. And, and Ken's pens fill this out. We are going to contribute a Ken's pen to the cornerstone. Okay. I think it would be a very appropriate. I think it's appropriate too. I want to thank you so much. Thank you very much. I want to thank you and your team for, for leaning in because this is a big deal that we're trying to do. Yes. If it weren't for individuals like yourself and your families that are backing this, we would be crawling. But now we're running. So thank right. you so thank much. You. I appreciate very you very much. much. Great. Thank you very much for the ride. Appreciate you. You guys are doing a terrific job, and you know what? Everything that you're doing is showing. Major district's engaged. We're engaged. Terrific project. Couldn't happen unless all you guys were behind us. Thank you and your families because I know everybody's working hard. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me something, isn't this unbelievable? This is just some of the donations that we received. You may find this hard to believe, but I'm winging a lot of what we're doing tonight. I know you're surprised to hear that. But if I understand correctly, I had this little thing in my ear that's telling me we have some lodges that have brought up some videos that they want to bring in. Is that exactly true? How many do we have? How many are out there? We have three. Can you cue the three of them up and bring them in? Do me a favor, do Good that. Evening, Grand Master. My name is Roy Works for Jose Capella, Bishop Deputy, Grand Master of the Ninth Manhattan District. And with me, Roy Works with Janet Weinrich, Grand Swordbearer of the Ninth Manhattan District. And here behind me are the brethren of the Ninth Manhattan District. Uh, one of our district deputy visits, Herdelard of the 690. And we are here tonight to present a check for $500 uh, towards the project of the greenhouse up in Utica. For you two on top. Okay. All right. Wow, this is amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Brother Vito. Thank you. Now, Grand Master, this is a total of one thousand dollars for the grand for the for the Grand Master's project, the greenhouse project up in Utica. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, Grand Master. Have a great evening. Good evening, most worshipful Grand Master. On behalf of the Masonic Purple Association, Berry County, we are proud to present this check for two thousand dollars to the Brotherhood Fund for your greenhouse initiative. <laughs> Grandmaster Sardone, on behalf of Master's Lodge Number 5, we'll be sending in a check to you on behalf of the Greenhouse Project, which we believe is a worthwhile cause. Thank you so much for your leadership. I mean, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Isn't that terrific? That's just some of the lodges that are out there working hard. Let me also tell everybody, by the way, that all donations tonight, every single one, is a 501c3 donation and tax deductible. Now one dime is going to the operational status of our Grand Lodge. Everything goes for charity. And also, based on how well this is going, let me give you something that you've never heard before live. That is that I, Grandmaster William Sardone, am giving a dispensation and blanket to all lodges that they can open late tonight. So everybody can open late tonight so they can stay with us. Because this may go a little bit longer than we thought. We don't want to lose anybody. I'm hearing now, in some here, that we have some people at 23rd Street that are lined up that want to give some money. Is that true? Let's see if we can switch. This is going to be pretty good. This is going to be pretty good. 
Live from New York, it's Tuesday night at the Grand Lodge building on 23rd Street. We got, we've got a big crowd we'll here, hopefully we can get through this in the next hour. So we'll have our first group coming up with the donation to the uh, greenhouse. Good evening, Grandmaster. Mason's <laughs> around the state of New York and worldwide. My name is Ryan Worshipful Wayne Smith, a member of Britannia Lodge, and I'm here to present a donation on behalf of Britannia Lodge in the sum of $150 towards the greenhouse project. And there's more to come. That's great. Thank you, brothers. Thank you so much. Wow. Brothers, on behalf of the Ridgewood Masonic Temple Guild and the brothers in Second Kings, uh, Towards the greenhouse, one thousand dollars. That's incredible. Thank you so much, brother. It's wonderful. That is so nice of you. Thank you. That is so Grand nice of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Second Kings District. Thank you, sir. And also Castle All right. Lodge of four, four, bye bye. And we that are pleased to be bit, part so of building the future when... <laughs> with you. So we are donating one hundred dollars from Castle Lodge, and four hundred dollars from the Second Kings District. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Wonderful. Grandmaster William Sardone, on behalf of the tour guides at the Grand Lodge of New York, we are proud to present this check to you for $1,200 uh, directed toward your greenhouse project. And uh, I particularly want to thank you for your courage, innovation, and vision in making all of this happen. First time ever event for the lodges. And I wish uh, you uh, every bit of success for the remainder of your term. Great. Thank you so much, brothers. Thank you all the work that you do. Representing the Grand Lodge as tour guides. Good evening, Grand Master, brothers and friends of the Grand Lodge of the state of New York. I'm here for myself. Robert L. Parry, Master of Ema Lodge in the 7th Manhattan District, and I'm donating this personal check to the Greenhouse Project for $200. Good luck and all the best. That's outstanding. Thank you so much. Just one more. Just one more. Grand Master, from your Six Manhattan District Association. Uh, we are very proud of you, and we are honored to be able to donate this check for $500 towards your greenhouse project. Thank you very much. Right, where's Mark Seppel? Thank you so much. Grandmaster, we're going to send it back to you. We have more donors lined up here in New York City, and we'll see you in a little while. When I became a Mason, I honestly didn't know what I thought my aspirations were. Um, I tell you, my, the most memorable instance I had was the Deputy Grandmaster at the time visiting our lodge and seeing him walk about the room, present and talk, it inspired me to want more. And that's, I think, when my aspirations changed to actually become master of the lodge someday. Joining a, joining a lodge is joining a family, and family should always be there for one another. And through the lodge, we've made so many friends who became family members that it's just been automatic if we ever needed anything. So I think, for me, masonry is fantastic. See, when he first told me about the masons, I had no idea what it was. I was I just thought it was a male fraternity, guys going out, just hanging out with each other, no wives allowed. But then when he joined it, I got to understand it and I realized that it's a lot of charity and it's like a brother, brotherhood that everyone is there for each other. And it's just, it's actually a beautiful thing to see. But then he mentioned he wanted to become master and all this stuff. And at first I was a little hesitant because we were, new, we were just about to get married, actually. We were supposed to, he became master, I think, in June. We were getting married in July, and I'm like, I'm gonna be a newlywed by myself. When I was becoming master, my fiance at the time was a little apprehensive because we had so much going on, uh, planning the wedding, uh, meeting for events, and meanwhile, I'm sitting there still doing lodge events. Uh, but she stood behind me and supported me and it, it became one of the best uh, days of my life when I actually became master, which was only eclipsed by the following month when I actually married her. 
together we did have a great time. As I became master, she became thrust into the forefront to which she took it in natural stride. Um, I had events for planning for picnic for our district and our lodge and she would be right there with me whether it be making baskets or doing whatever needed to be done to make sure that we had successful events and all the family in there, the kids and guests enjoyed it. And I became a big part because I wanted to be there and I wanted to make sure everything went well for his year. I supported him and then I didn't realize how good of a speaker he was. He was able to just inspire everybody and wanting to do better and making everybody wanting to come and it was just, it was nice. One thing that I didn't think it was, it was very big with family. They're very family oriented. Um, everything is, they want family to be involved, which is nice. They do family activities. I'm happy with all the friendships we developed. I'm friends with people from my age to older and just different groups. And I became good friends with so many wives and that I consider them my really, really good friends that I can actually say that I enjoy it and I enjoy the new people that I have in my life and it's, it's nice. The individual who inspired me um, inspired me not only to become a better person, a better mason, but to be a, become a leader in the craft. And in that role, you have to want to inspire others because you want for the new person what you wanted for yourself. And so for me, when new members join, I spend some time with them and speak with them and tell them, you know, masonry is what you make it. There is no dictate of what you have to do and what needs to be done. You have, you have to make masonry what you want. Mold it, mold your experiences, learn, grow, meet new other, meet other people. You'll create relationships beyond that of what you could have conceived previously. I definitely think um, my experience with different walks of life, people who I normally would have never met, has definitely been a benefit to me, joining and meeting them through the lodge. Um, it's inspired me to work on various other projects, um, whether it's charitable or promotional or just, um, just helping one another. It's been something that I would have never had done if it wasn't for becoming a Mason. Being a Mason is, is a tremendous accomplishment for me. That alone far surpasses just being a master. Um, being a Mason is the pinnacle. Everything else that came after it has been a tremendous bonus. Thank you. Really? Really? That is so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's very good. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'll tell everybody right now. Thank you. This just in. Mike Morris and his wife are donating $150,000 to tonight's greenhouse dedication as matching dollars. So everything you give, everything you give will be matched up to $150,000. And his specific instructions are, they wanna grow vegetables, flowers, and Freemasonry. Those are three things that go together. I think they all bear fruit, so that's fine. We have some YouTube, uh, social media stuff that came in. Uh, Joe Maniscalco saw his wife. He said, she's beautiful. Yes, she is. Richard Newton wants to know if we've blown up the internet yet. Nope, I got the rest of the night. The night is young. Michael Siegel, hello from Mid-Hudson and break a leg. I'm standing still for that. Knock em dead, Grandmaster from Robert Gore. Dan Lort, he's watching this from Florida. We'll serve that one out. The Fraternal Sublime Princes of Royal, or Fraternal, except the Scottish Rite, Valley of New York City. Say hello and they want to be remembered. Alex Sadler, Senior Demolay. He said, you go, Dad Sardone, you're making me proud. Those are some of the things we have here that have come up. At this time, it is my pleasure to continue to move on. What do we have next here? Do we have some more lodges that have some things that they want to bring on? Did it? What do we have? How many lodges we have? Is that two or three? Three? See if you can queue them up and send them in, all right? Good. Grandmaster Sardot, this is Scriba Lodge, 414, Constantia, New York. We're just winging this today. We're going to send you $1,100 for the greenhouse fund. Thank you.
This is good. Do we have another lodge that's uh, coming on? I'm going to get my birthday of the 87th year on March 12th this year. And I would like to make a donation for the Teleton of the Grand Master of the State of New York. We started with the $500, but any donation that you can do to help this cause will be very appreciated. Even a small amount will add up. Thank you and have a nice day. Most Worshipful Grand Master, the brothers of Harry S. Truman Lodge from 1066 raised $270 for your greenhouse. Hip, hip. Grandmaster Sargon, we're the Masons from Liverpool, Syracuse, Lo and Sonic Lodge, and we're 501. We are proud to be part of this great telethon. We had a check in amount of $200 for the Masonic Charity Program for Autism. We are proud to be Masons throughout the world, and we are proud of our Grand Lodge of the State of New York. Thank you very much from Syracuse, Liverpool Lodge, 501. You know, do me a favor here. This thing's going well. Do we have a thermometer readout? Is there a thermometer update? You have a lot of money that's coming in. These people are pretty busy back here, which I'm happy to see. Look at that, $200,000. Our goal for tonight was $200,000. So we've already hit that and we're still going strong. Let's see what we can do. I think we might be able to double it. I have an idea. Why? I just have an idea. My pleasure to be joined here with Nice young man who's part of our library, is the president of our trustees, Steve King. Steve, thank you for joining me. Uh, pleasure to be with you and the team, Grandmaster. Good, Brad. Do me a favor, we have a library in New York City that I think is uh, very envied by a lot of individuals. And I think we have a portion of it up here. Can you give us a little feedback on that? Uh, yes, uh, although uh, many people may not know the entire history of the library. We've, uh, not we, but the library has been doing its thing since before the American Civil War. It was largely uh, a repository for books and records, but as we added collections and more materials, by 1935 or so, it became a formal museum and library. And finally, in 1985, uh, we received a charter from the Board of Regents of the State of New York. We're a bona fide 501c3 uh, corporation for anyone who's interested in charitable giving. And uh, we have been on the 14th floor at 23rd Street since uh, about 1996. And of course, a few steps from here, we have the uh, lovely Utica Annex, which is just a beautiful building in its own right. It's almost museum-like to be able to look at it, but inside there are uh, marvelous treasures that uh, have come to the museum, have come, some of them, uh, to the Masonic Hall and Home Trustees, who's, who, who have Lots of wonderful artifacts over that as well, over there as well. And it's just a great place for people to visit. And the good thing about having everyone up here for the St. Saints John, Saints John's Day celebration is they get a chance to walk through there. And sometimes it's a little interesting when we're having our board meetings and we're getting tourists coming through the room. But, but uh, you know, it's all good because people get exposed to this marvelous cultural and historical entity that we call the Livingston Library. You know, it's unbelievable. I've been there many, many times, and I know that when I go there, there are actually people who come from all over the world who come there to do research. We get inquiries from all over the globe, certainly all over the country, and I believe that in terms of the, the number of live bodies who went through uh, the library last year, it was uh, in excess of uh, 3,000 individuals. Now, that's not all Masons, but it's getting close to 10% of our membership. That's terrific, and I know you have lectures once a month. I think you have a videotape that you brought, so do me a favor. Can we roll that videotape? Yes, please. Steve, maybe you can grab some phone.
Welcome back to us. By the way, if anybody's looking to donate, if you can possibly get through to these phones over here, Steve King was going to take somebody's place, but nobody seems to hang up the phone long enough for him to sit down. We have our Deputy Grand Master and his team and some other people there taking calls. If you can't get through to these individuals, you can go to donate.nymasons.org. Or if you happen to get a voicemail, no problem at all. We'll pick up the voicemail, we'll call you back, or you can leave your donation information on the voicemail. Nothing gets lost. We get everybody. You're more than welcome. Stay with us. In the meantime, this young lady here is going to speak to us about our Camp Turk program. We have a location up in Round Lake that has a program for young children, and Kathy Contino Turner is uh, well renowned and knowledgeable about this particular subject. Kathy, thanks for joining us tonight. We're so glad to, that you, it's really not camping weather yet, but it's going to be camping weather soon. And the great thing about Camp Turk is we offer a three week program for girls, a three week program for boys. Your donation to the Camp Turk program, if you choose that as the charity tonight, can help a child maybe attend camp that parents might not be able to afford to let a child go. We can buy life jackets, we can buy canoes and different things, and there's 30 some odd activities at the camp, both land-based and water-based. Play basketball, tennis. If you're not sending your kid to Camp Turk, you are missing the boat. Okay. Well, and they have boats at Camp Turk too. <laughs> and they have lots of boats. They at have Camp boats Turk. at Camp yes, Turk. So if you, if you miss the yep. boat, you can go to the boat yep. at Camp Turk. Yep. Do they have scholarships? It, uh, how do they children do pay it, for this? They do have scholarships. It's five hundred twenty-five dollars a week, which, by the way, is a bargain. But there are scholarships available. So again, if you want to donate tonight and say, "Gee, I really want to send a kid to camp," five hundred twenty-five dollars sends one child for one week to camp. So maybe that's a great opportunity for you to make a a child's summer an Adirondack experience. You know, I appreciate that very much. I know we have a video because it's going right. to show a lot more than what we can possibly talk about. Thank you for coming. I appreciate everything you do. Let's see if we can get that video. Good. Is that all right?
Well, we're going to be switching back to 23rd Street in a minute, but I thought I'd bring you up to date on some of the donations that we're getting in here. You see these uh, individuals behind me? I thought they might not be busy tonight. Learns out they're very busy, which is good. $400 came in from uh, the Southern Tier District. Grand Lodge of Lebanon, $750 came in for the Grand Lodge of Lebanon. Can you believe that? That's halfway around the world and we're getting money from them. $200 here came in from Dan Gorman, who's out there. He called in early this afternoon. Hold on to your hat for this one. Everybody, you got your tray tables up, your seat belts fastened? This is unbelievable. Ninth Manhattan District, two donations. One donation, $39,000. $340.13, and the second donation, $33,629.47. 39 went to the greenhouse, 33 went to our Masonic Medical Research Institute. So, congratulations to you. That's uh, tremendous to have. We have another little bit of uh, social media came in from Peter Stokey, Jr. It's a proud day to be a Mason and Senior DMLA. Thank you, Dad Sardone. That's one of our young men that's out there. I think at this time, we have some people at 23rd Street that are calling in that want to line up and give some donations. Is that true? Let's switch to them. Grandmaster, the, Grandmaster, the line is out the door. The brother's here. Can't wait to give more money. And we're going to double what you uh, wanted as your goal. Grandmaster Sardone, brothers and guests all, I am Worshipful Avery Toledo. This is the Worshipful Master Andres Delgado. We're from Amos Fork Green Lodge, and we are here to present a check for $5,000 to tonight's event. That's incredible. Thank yeah. you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Grandmaster of Bill Sardone. Uh, from, again, from 9th District, in behalf of um, Knickerbocker Lodge 192, we are here to donate $1,000 for your green um, house project. Thank you very That's much. That's great. Thank you, brothers. <laughs> the legendary Mark Suckle. Grandmaster, from the Golden Rule Claremont McKinley Lodge Community Chest, of which you are going to be the man of the year honored on the 28th of May at Fino's of Wall Street, we are very proud to present you an additional check for $500. That's great. Thank you, Mark. Wonderful. Grandmaster, brother and all, on behalf, oh, sorry. <laughs> on behalf of Reliance Lodge number 776 in the mighty Second Kings District, we would like to make this donation of a really totally real check, $500 for the Greenhouse Project. That's great. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Thank you so much. Grandmaster, my name is David Schlamm. I do, I'm honored to be a tenant in this building and also do the brokerage. We have it's an unbelievable building and organization. I'd like to donate $5,000 to the Greenhouse Project in your honor, and um, along with my associate, Herb, who's my commercial manager, and it's just great being in this building. Thank you. Yeah. That's great, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Grandmaster, on behalf of my wife Debbie and myself, right, Worshipful Harold Kahn, donating $100 to your Greenhouse Project, a very worthy cause. Thank you. Hello, Grandmaster. On behalf of myself and my wife Rita, we are proud to give a check in honor of our three grandchildren, Leo, Nemo, and Indy. Great job, Grandmaster. That is great. Thank you so much. Grandmaster, we'll be back in a minute with more donations. It's back to you in Utica. Grandmaster Sardone, Deputy Grandmaster Kessler, Grand Line of the Grand Lodge, and brothers all who are listening today at the Grandmaster's Telethon for uh, the fundraiser for his greenhouse or our greenhouse uh, that is to be built on the Utica campus. Uh, my name is Michael Siegel, and I'm the District Deputy Grand Master of the Mid-Hudson District, and I'm coming to you today from my own little greenhouse window uh, in the Mid-Hudson Valley. Um, you know, Grand Master, I have with me today the letter M. 
And the letter M today stands not only for masonry and the Mid-Hudson District and majestic Mid-Hudson District, but it also stands for money. Now, you and I talked about a month ago, and uh, we had talked about how much money my district had raised by selling your pins, Building for the Future. Um, and after talking with you, we decided we had to up our game, that we had not raised enough money and we needed to do better. And so I talked to the Past Purple Association here, and they dedicated our charity ball, which is upcoming on April 13th, to the greenhouse and all funds raised for that uh, will go and be donated towards the building of the greenhouse but we also found a donor here uh, who appreciates you and they gave us some pledge money to match grant match donations to the charity ball and we told everybody if you want to donate to the charity ball that you need to uh, make your donations right away because we need to get this match going and, and raise some money. Uh, and we need to report it to the Grand Master today on, on, on uh, March 19th. So this is the box that we carried around for you. And uh, you can see it's filled with money, Grand Master. Uh, and that's a big dollar uh, on, on the end there, but there's several more of them in here. Um, but this box does not fully count everything that we've raised to date. The number that we're going to pledge today is under this M, and I'm going to reveal it now. $21,000 is what we've raised to date, which we plan to turn over to you shortly. And we hope to even push that number higher at our charity ball on April 13th. Um, and we're working hard to support your great ideas and you inspire us and we thank you for it. Good, how are you? As you can see, we're playing this by ear here because we have more stuff coming in. We have a couple of uh, social media comments that came in. It's a great time to be a Mason, John Rivera. Andrew Vickers was so proud of the Cornerstone dedication this weekend. Rafi Timonian, direct from Lebanon. Greetings and full support from your brother in the Grand Lodge of Lebanon. Isn't that great uh, that we have other global jurisdictions that are helping us out? I'm joined here by Dr. Contaridis, who is the director of our Masonic Medical Research Institute, which is, even though it's right down the block, this is not just an institute for the Masons here in New York, but also around the world, globally accessible. Dr. Contaridis, thank you so much thank you. for joining us here. Do me a favor. Thank Give you for having me. It. Thank yes. you. Um, we're very delighted to be here today and help sponsor some of these events tonight. But the, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're doing here at the Masonic Medical Research Institute. Since January of last year, we've expanded our research efforts. We're focusing on not just congenital heart disease on pediatric patients, but also on end-stage heart failure and heart disease in uh, the adults. We're also taking on everything in between from metabolism to diabetes, obesity, and inflammation in the heart. And we've also recently embarked on studying new areas of research, including autism, uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, as well as cancers, um, autoimmune diseases like lupus, and other things um, that we hope to take on in the next few years. That's terrific. I think you have some individuals that you brought with you. Maybe you can let them share some of the limelight here of what are the great things you're doing. Maybe. We can pass Absolutely. the microphone down. Thank you, Grandmaster, for the opportunity. So my name is Kulhan Orkan Sanchicek. I do research on autism. So autism is a neuropsychiatric disorder. One in 59 children in U.S. has autism. Therefore, in M uh, MMRI, we do research to make the bridge between the genetics and the neuroscience to understand the disease mechanism of autism. So for that purpose, we use the cutting edge technologies such as we use patients' cell lines and make brain kind of small organoids to understand the disease. This will help us not only to understand the disease mechanism, but also in the future we can 
make the uh, make, we can make the connection between how to how to treat the patients with uh, the, with this disease. Hi, my name is Chase Kessinger. Um, my research interests are in uh, developing novel therapies and imaging strategies to treat DVT or deep vein thrombosis. That's uh, blood clots in your deep veins of your legs. And also in treating and uh, imaging PE or pulmonary embolism, that's when those blood clots break off in your deep veins and travel to your lungs. Uh, more specifically, my research goals long term would be to provide doctors uh, the ability to stratify their, uh, their therapies and basically imaging strategies to help cure uh, these diseases in people and also provide basically a, a therapy that's optimized to you personal patients. And what we like to call and what Gohan has talked about is this personalized medicine. I have a quick question. I come up here a lot. I get down to the opportunity. I have the opportunity coming down to your institute. I see more than two people. I see more than three. I think you have a few more people down there. Yes, indeed. Actually, as of January 1st of this year, we have 42 new individuals, or not new individuals, total individuals, with 29 of them being new as of January of last year. All of these people have traveled from many places to be part of our institute, including Boston at Harvard, uh, Yale University, and all the way from California to be a part of our institute. So we're very excited about the possibilities and what we will be able to do in the next few years to cure and treat disease. I think your growth is uh, unmatched as far as what you have to do. But one of the things we need to understand is, is that this research institute is just not predicated to us here in Utica. This is for everybody. And while I don't understand a lot of what goes on there, as I have said to Dr. Contaritas many times, I do understand the word cure. And the word cure is what we're looking for for everything we do. I want to thank you so much. I believe we have a video that we can put up regarding the Institute that can explain a little bit more. That's Good. Terrific. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maria Contaritas, and I'm the new director of research here at the Masonic Medical Research Institute. Welcome to our laboratory. The design of this space was created to build space for six to seven investigators, along with four to five postdoctoral fellows, students, and technicians who work within those laboratories to work collaboratively and to network to create an opportunity to come together and build and find cures for cardiac disease. We have sequence analyzers, we have data that will allow us to do analysis for all of the DNA from either human patients or animal samples that can incorporate some of the work that we do upstairs on the second floor at the molecular level to understand disease etiology that causes cardiovascular disease and risk. This is an example of one of our housing rooms. This has the capacity to store several pages of mouse genetic models that allow us to do research on the second and genetic floor wings of the building. Many of these genetic models actually incorporate not just cardiovascular disease, but diseases that include diabetes, obesity, autoimmune disease, and gastrointestinal diseases as well. You know, everything's going along really well up here. Let me give you some more good news. We have a estate here from the Steinbergs family. And what they're doing is they are matching for the Masonic Medical Research Institute up to $100,000 tonight. So remember before we just got a check in for 33,000 and change and some other ones have come in. That has now doubled thanks to the Franklin. And these individuals here have come online and you can see a picture of who they are. These pictures were the best one we have right now. They were Masons and at this point in time their estate is still coming and helping us here at our institute. So thank you so much for what you're doing. That was a terrific thing. Please shout out to the Steinberg family. We appreciate it very much. I understand that we have some lodges that are uh, online that want to get involved here and say something. Is that true? How many do we have? We have three, four, ten, fourteen, four. Line them up and put them in queue. Let's see if we can get them. We don't want to lose them. Lodge would like very much for you to take this check to the Brotherhood Fund for the building of the greenhouse up in Utica. It's made Thank up. you. The, the Grand Master will surely appreciate it and it will put it be put in at the telephone. Right. 
the whole way. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hello, Grandmaster. How are you? <laughs> Regards from the 8th Manhattan. <laughs> Most worshipful Grandmaster Sardone, on behalf of the 8th Manhattan District, we are happy to join you on your telethon is a great cause. How soon can we do a thermometer? We raise $600 for your greenhouse cause, and it's our pleasure to support you and send that in. Thank you very much for all your hard work. All right. Cool. Grandmaster, this is Mike Petrick, Worshipful Master of Western Carolina from Red Native Five. And me and the brothers are here to say we're 100% behind you with a check for $500. Yeah! As president of Clifford Square Club, we do charitable events for Masonic charities. We give away every penny that we make and we earn through our fundraising of our October Fest. And we give to all the Masonic charities. Now at this point, we are giving $4,500 to the Greenhouse Fund for the Grand Masters. Grand Greenhouse Fund in Utica, New York. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your On behalf support. of And here we are, we're back here live, coming from Utica, New York, in the Masonic Care community. I have a donation that came in from Steve and Susan Getman for $500 in memory of Right Worshipful George Getman. Thank you so much, Steve, it's very nice. Sitting next to me is Rob Raffle, who's executive director of this entire establishment up here. But I think first, let's take a look and see where our thermometer is, because we may be gaining some money here. I can't see, how much are we up to? Harry, what does it say? Three hundred thousand dollars, unbelievable. Three hundred thousand. You know, we were hoping that we first started this thing, we were going to get fifty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand. And somebody said, "Why don't you go for a little bit more?" And I got nervous about it. But thanks to everybody here and what they've been doing, I'm still nervous. But we're doing well, and we're going to continue to do well. Rob Raffle is the man who holds everything together up here in the Masonic Care community. I want to thank him for being with us tonight. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Grandma. Tell us about some of what we have here. Oh, yeah. The, the campus here in Utica, over 400 acres. Um, we have, have over 500 residents on our campus. Many of them are Masons. Uh, we have 900 employees. We have the full continuum of care for our residents who live here. Uh, we have a child care center as well. Uh, it's just a wonderful place for people to go and live out their life. That's very nice. I think that you have some expansions coming on here. We do. We actually uh, have just completed our master plan. Uh, so we're in the process right now of completing some construction uh, documents. And once we finish those, we'll start building some more uh, project here on campus. So we're going to have some cottages for our residents. We're going to have uh, apartments. Um, the greenhouse, of course, which is greenhouse. an exciting, uh, exciting project for us, which greenhouse. really will, will give our residents uh, something very unique that no other place can say they have. And I really am um, excited for it for our residents. I appreciate your support. Uh, I know it's going to be a great project when it's done. You know, one of the many things we say about masonry here in New York is that this is one of the jewels that w of what we have. But unless you come here and you see how, how well it's run, how well the people are cared for, the opportunities that they have, I think you opened up a, a rehab facility where they can learn how to come out into society again. With the we did. We, uh, something, again, very unique to our area. Uh, we have a, an ADL program now where residents can actually go and practice the things that they normally would not be able to do in a rehab setting. So they can go and act like they're in a grocery store. They can uh, go upstairs like they would at their home. Uh, they can actually transfer in and out of a car inside of the space, uh, outside of the weather elements. So it's nice that they can get that confidence they need so that when they do return home, they're ready and that's, they're safe. That's very good. I think we do have a video here that explains some of it. Let's see if we can key that up. Can we show some of the video? Thank you.
this is a great place to be. By the way, did you see those ladies playing cards? Don't play with them. I played with them once before. I didn't win. I don't know how they do it, but I never win. The other thing is, if you take a look at some of that video as you go around, you see a lot of individuals, some that have World War II hats on, Vietnam hats on, veterans that have served our country and are living their life here at the Masonic Care community. If you ever have the opportunity to come up here, and I urge all Masons to do it, no matter what state you're from, come up, say hello to them, walk over to Wiley Hall, have lunch with them. They would be more than happy to be there, and you'll be surprised and you'll be thrilled at the stories that they share with you. You know, one of the things we do here in New York Masonry is we support our Masonic youth. We have a young lady sitting next to me here that's going to talk more about youth, but in the meantime, let's see if we can key up some of the leaders that we have for our Masonic youth. Hi, my name is Melanie Corona, and I am the Grand Worthy Advisor of the International Order of the Rainbow for Girls, State of New York. Hi, my name is Samuel Levin, and I'm the State Master Counselor of New York Female Life. Hi, my name is Megan Henderson, and I'm the State Representative for the Organization of Triangles Incorporated. We are the Masonic Youth Leaders. The International Order of the Rainbow for Girls is a Masonic youth organization for girls aged 10 to 21. We focus on service and charity. Last year, our charity project of America's Best Dog, we were able to raise $10,000. DMLA is a Masonic youth group for young men ages 12 to 21. We teach them to be better sons, better brothers, better friends, in public service, and charity. The Organization of Triangles Incorporated is a youth Masonic organization for girls ages 10 to 21. We co focus on charity and triangles set around three duties, the duty to God, to ourselves, and to others. Well, if you'd like to learn more about Rainbow Triangle or DMLA, call 315-798-4940. What we'll do is we'll take your phone number and we'll give you a call back and we'll sort it out to the proper association and organization and then get back to you. They're a great team. We have a number of senior DMLAs that are here in this audience helping out. I'm a senior DMLA myself, and thanks to that organization, I've been able to do a lot of good things in life. We have some uh, other social media comments that have come up. Jan Weinrich, great day as Freemasonry moves into the 21st century for the Masonic Care community. Local proprietors, Helmers Fuel and Trucking has given us $500. Larry Sussman, director at the Research Institute, $500 that he sent, dropped off a check today. We have Harvard Maintenance in New York City that takes care of our Masonic Hall. $20,000 that they have given to us today. That's terrific. You know, a lot more is coming in here. We appreciate it so much. The vendors that help us out are really keeping our place up and running here. You know, let me now move this over to this young lady on my left, Elizabeth Reardon, who is involved with our daycare and our children here on the campus. So, Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having you me. You have a smile that reaches through the entire campus here. That's good. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about the daycare center? Absolutely, I can. Really quickly, a little history about Masonic Child Care was it was built in 1991 by the Board of Trustees who had a passion and commitment for children that originally started back in 1893. And it's still happening today. So we have children from six weeks to five years old at our child care center. And it's all year round. And our children that attend there, are the majority of them are the employees of Masonic. So they're able to bring their children to work, drop them off, know that they're going to be taken care of, able to do their job here with the residents or maintenance or wherever they are to be able to do their job and no, it's gonna be worry-free. And then we open our doors to the Masons, children, and then the outside community. You know what, I've been over there many times and I've had the opportunity to walk through their facility. And there's one entire wall that's taken up with awards. Oh, it is. We are award-winning center. I have a fantastic team. We're recognized nationally and locally. Really? I, um, you said to me a word the other day, intergenerational, <gasps> which uh, it was too big for my Scrabble board, but 
It must mean something. <laughs> it does. Intergenerational is a fantastic word. Really, what it is, is it's able to bond our children and our residents together. And so what do we do? We do it all year round, lots of activities throughout the year. Every Friday, we come over to the health pavilion, whether the children are playing games or building crafts. It's an opportunity for the children to build a rapport with our, our, our residents and, and learn so much from them. You know, let me tell you something. We all talk about this greenhouse that we're trying to promote and build, and this, this will be built. We had a cornerstone dedication, and I'm told that by seven or eight months from now, this greenhouse will be constructed. But one of the things that gave us the idea was, is we have many planters that are around the facilities here. And these planters are for the seniors who wind up growing not only flowers, they grow cucumbers, tomatoes, it just overflows. But then we see the young children come over. And what I've seen is, is seniors who might have some difficulty in communication, and children who also have difficulty in communicating, but they communicate when they get into the dirt. So the greenhouse is going to do more to unite them together so that they can all learn together and they can actually grow together Absolutely. is really what it is. So thank you, Elizabeth. I think we have a video that shows a little bit more about what you have. Why don't we hit that video and see what we have. The Masonic Care You're Community a operates a state and nationally recognized child care center. We give the children quality care and educational care. We service children from Oneida and Herkimer County, the children that come here from six weeks to five years old. Our infants from six weeks to two participate in our infant stimulation program, which helps social, emotional, and physical development. And our preschool classrooms, they work on the kindergarten readiness program and that curriculum is specifically designed to get them to transition right into kindergarten. You don't have to be an employee or a mason. You can be a community member to come here at our child care center. For more information, you can go to our website at mccny.com. The Masonic Care Community, caring for people since 1893. Well, some of the lodges out there have taken me seriously about giving them a blanket dispensation of starting late. It's all worth it. Here's one lodge, Forest Lodge, number 166. They're meeting right now, and they've donated $725 during the meeting. So maybe when I stop by, we'll check that in a minute and see if it's there. It's really great of you to do. I'm very, very happy and very, very pleased. And uh, Dr. Contaridis here, she's been taking some money in too, $2,500 she just took before, which is going to the greenhouse. So Dr. Contaridis is working hard. We have a lot of things going on. I think we have some more lodges that I want to uh, call us in here. Let me see. We do. Grandmaster, on behalf of the Suffolk District, I would like to donate, donate this motorized wheelchair in the name of Brother Joe Rizzo, who is a member of Antiquity Lodge number 11. Jo Joe passed away recently, and he had this chair, and it was unused. It was brand new. Uh, so all the lodges of the district chipped in and bought it from the family out of the estate, and we want to do donate it to the Masonic uh, Hall. The thank you. Community. You know, this is terrific. I want to, first of all, let me thank you. I knew Joe, and uh, it was a sad day when we heard that he passed. But let me tell you, this is going to come in handy right here because they just put together a rehabilitation unit over in the health pavilion where they can show people after they have been rehabilitated and what they're going through, how to shop again, how to use an ATM machine again. And it's geared so that you can either be walking around or in a motorized vehicle such as this. So, uh, I see that you have various speeds for low and high, and knowing the people up here at the Masonic Care community, it'll be on high the whole time because they're always moving fast up here. Thank you very watch, much. Watch out for them, mate, because they, 
moves really quick. Well, I wrote it in. If the Grand Lodge gets requests for radar detectors up here, I'm going to know there's a problem. So <laughs> you got it. But in the meantime, I want to thank you very much. I want to thank the members of your district. And uh, you know what? Go back to the family and let them know that uh, Joe lives on in helping others. I will do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you so much. This is You're terrific. Welcome. <laughs> By the way, that uh, little electric scooter that they're talking about is right over here. I'm happy we saw the video that showed me riding around in it, and I'm happy that you see me not riding around in it now. I'm up here walking. I'm not ready to be admitted here yet, but if the time comes, I'll be here. There's a plaque on the back that talks about Joe Rizzo and he was a terrific individual. I'm very sorry he passed. We're thankful that some of his memory will live on and help others as well. At this time here, it is a, uh, a video that we're going to put up that we're going to look at as a typical ad that we're going to try. I will always miss your grandfather. It was nice to see all his friends at his Masonic service. Your grandfather wanted me to give this to you. Now you take a look at that video. That was something that we put together very quickly on our own. I want to thank Georgia, who's from our library, and jo Joe, who's also from our library in 23rd Street. And what we did is we wanted to make an impact to let everybody know that masonry is here. What we find is, is that there's many grandfathers who went to Lodge, but for whatever reason it was, it just didn't get passed down to some of their sons. We're finding a lot of grandsons are looking through their grandfather's things and seeing Masonic regalia, Masonic jewelry and they are gravitating to the cause that we have. So take a look at that, that's some of the many ads. We are working at putting out things on social media. We started a full campaign that has been launched by David Menegon that's going to hit Facebook, social media, and it's going to do is, it's going to make people aware that Masonry is here, not just to grow membership, but to make them know that we are here doing good things for society and our communities. It's a great time to be a Mason. We are here for you. I think now I'm hearing again that in 23rd Street, there are some people coming up again who have more money. Can you believe it? Where's all this money coming from? These guys in New York are terrific as they are everywhere else. Let's go to them downtown and see what we have. We're back here in Manhattan, and the money is just rolling right in. We know we have now the Grand Secretary for the state. My name is uh, Richard Schultz, so I'm the Grand Secretary of the Grand Lodge yeah. of New York, and I'm here to donate $100 yeah, of a personal check the for the Masonic Medical Research Institute in New York. This I, yeah, yeah 600000 I, I never added That's great. Thank and, you. And, and, and it's still coming in. Yeah. And the lines will stay open. When do you want to... Did it work? Good evening, Grand Master. From the Get fabulous up here. First Get up here. Get up here. The proud sponsor of Brooklyn D. Malay. We're donating... Money in the amount of two thousand thirty dollars towards the greenhouse. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Grandmaster, on behalf of myself, my wife, my daughter, I'd like to donate two hundred dollars on for the greenhouse. That's wonderful. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Good evening, David. Good evening, Grandmaster. I'm Louis Rosenthal. I'm the secretary of Cornerstone Lodge, number 178, and I make this personal donation of $500 to the Medical Research Institute. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening, Grand Master, brothers everywhere, and friends of Masonry. Grand Master, we were very excited at Cornerstone Lodge, number 178 in the 2nd Manhattan District, when we heard about your greenhouse project. 
and we wanted to be involved. So we designed and manufactured these Cornerstone Lodge number 178 challenge coins. From the sale of these challenge coins, Cornerstone Lodge is more than happy to donate $1,000 in the proceeds from the sale. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, brother. Good evening, Grandmaster. Uh, Isaac Allen from Perfect Square Lodge in the 7th District, also chairman of the 7th District uh, Foundation uh, Fundraising Committee. We'll be doing a fundraiser on May 4th here at Grand Lodge. And I'm so proud to announce that we'll be donating part of the proceeds to your initiative uh, in the Greenhouse Project. Uh, information could be found on our website at MD7NY, that's Mike, uh, Mike Delta, numeral 7, NovemberYankee.com for further information. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Right Worshipful George Philippides. Good evening, Grandmaster. George Philippides here. The Greenhouse Project that, has, that has now become the horticultural uh, project is especially dear to me because like many of us, dementia and Alzheimer's has affected my family. It's true, gardening does offer benefits to folks suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. It's a devastating blow to see your loved ones get swallowed up by it. Not only the one afflicted, but the entire family that loves that person. I'm in awe and I applaud the families that are matching our donations today. In that effort, I'd like to contribute to the success of this telethon with my contribution of $5,000. Here you go, Grandmaster. Good evening, Grandmaster. On behalf of the staff and the trustee's office in New York City, I'm pleased to present a gift of $500 from the staff for the greenhouse. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, Brother David. Good evening, everyone. Grandmaster, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of the members of the Board of Directors of the Masonic Medical Research Institute. I am here to donate on a personal cost to the Masonic Medical Research Institute, $1,500. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, here's the second Manhattan. Of course we are. <laughs> Most worshipful Grandmaster, we're proud to be here this evening. We have a check from the Second Masonic District Welfare Foundation in the loving memory of Teresa Rosenthal and Erica Springer for $500. We also have another check from the Second Masonic District Welfare Foundation and the 2016-2018 uh, Metropolitan District Deputies Association, money we raised for a lobster bake uh, to go to the greenhouse project in the amount of $1,500. Speaking of district deputy, Metropolitan District Deputies, I'm proud to be part of the 1994-1996 Metropolitan District Deputies Association, better known as the most worshipful Gary Arthur Henningsen Viking team. And we have a check for $1,468 towards the Greenhouse Project. Thank you very much for letting us present these. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Worshipful Master, we now have the Junior Grand Warden, Dr. Oscar Allen. Good evening, Grand Master, and congratulations on such a successful event. Uh, as you know, I travel all over the world and, uh, with respect to Freemasonry, uh, and as we spoke about raising funds for your greenhouse project, now known as the Horticultural Learning Center, uh, I was able to provide folks with this DVD about Freemasonry across the world. And by sale of these DVDs, we also collected uh, monies for the Horticultural and the Greenhouse Project. And I'm here to donate uh, sorry, $725 that we raised specifically for that effort. And with that, we want to say congratulations. Grandmaster, that wraps it up here in New York City. We want to all thank you for your vision and everything you've done to the craft. Back to you. Some people say, and they say it a lot, that nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best. 
but knowing you could be even better. <laughs> it's being present, but respectful of history. You want to take that back? Yeah. yeah. I think you should. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, now go ahead, circle it. It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families. They're treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man. It's being a mason. This is one of the many ads that we're using, and I want to thank the Northern Masonic Jurisdiction of Scottish Rite, specifically Dave Glatley, Senior DMLA, Michael Russell, DMLA guy that worked with me in Kansas City when I was Grandmaster. They work together at a path forward view of what we can do for masonry. They've done a tremendous amount of work. And what am I doing? I'm taking the work that they've done and we're working it to the next step. This particular video that you saw is just one of many that they have done. And they have given it to us to use for no charge. So I want to thank them for that. This is a tremendous good representation of what masonry is about. We're here for a long time. We've done a lot of good things. It's now once again time for the world to know. And I'm also being told once again that we have some more lodges that are coming in. Again, we have more. How many? Do we have 200, 300, 9,000? Two, three, seven, three. Let's see if we can clear up three. Good. Hello, my name is Josh Schlageter. I'm the Worshipful Master of Ancient Landmarks Lodge, number 358. And these are my brothers of Ancient Landmarks. And we would like to present the Masonic Care Community and their Greenhouse Project with this check for $680. Thank you very much for all that you do. On behalf of the Master, Wardens, and Trustees of Harmony Lodge number 699, we're so excited for the opportunity to be able to support our Grand Master and Grand Lodge with this year's Greenhouse Initiative. You know, just so you know that we're on the right track, that last video was from Franklin Lodge. And Franklin Lodge has stepped up to do something that I just happened to mention that our trustees might have heard. That's one of the things we're thinking about doing here is bringing together a little bit of a model railroading enthusiast group that may be in conjunction with the greenhouse. So they have donated $1,000 to kick that campaign off. So that's why they put that little train thing together there, which is kind of cute. We have a lot that we're doing. This is a great night. Do we have a thermometer reading of where we are? Do we have a, a reading? We should be somewhere that's pretty good. I think we should be pretty... $700,000. $700,000. That's unbelievable. Are you ready? ready to start this party? Are you ready? Go. We have a couple of things here to celebrate. We have... Uh, Obviously, we're better at doing some things than confetti, so we're having to go behind us here. Let me, let me thank some of the individuals here. This is our Deputy Grand Master, who's uh, shooting me up here with confetti and everything. This is good. Listen, I blew the budget on confetti. Use it all up here. We use it all up. We need to use more of this confetti. Let me thank some of the many people. You know what? We couldn't have done this without some of the engineers involved. And I reached back to my years at AT&T, back to John Michaels, Perry Finkelstein, Tom Royer to come out and they have produced this, not only here, but back in New York City as well. We have our trustees in Masonic Hall that have made all of the facilities available to us, our IT people, our electricians. They had to bring an extra electric to make all of these lights work so that we didn't, of course, half of Utica's gone dark, but we have all the electricity <laughs> over here and everything is fine. Let me also thank uh, the DMLAs. We got a check in before from Union Chapter in Westfield, New Jersey who sent in $100, which I want to thank. Austin, who's been helping us. Anthony Kochi, Austin's mom, Veronica. We have Rob Verdon, has been running back and forth and helping us. R.J. Kessler, our Deputy Grand Master, has been working with us as well. Good applause for them. Back in New York. 
I'm going to try and get everybody as best I can. Back in New York, we have Dave Menegon, Scott Pete, Tony Adamo, back in there. And by, of all means, the priority of those who have helped us out is Kevin Bartels, Kathy Bartels, and Ed Bartels. Three Bartels rolled into one, and they all came out and helped. They did all the editing. They did all the work. They stood up till 2 and 3 in the morning. They did all a tremendous amount. I am so thankful to have them. I want to thank all of our dialed people who took care of our phones, people from the Research Institute, all of those who came in to be here. We do this because we're not just men, we're Masons. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our great Masonic fraternity, and God bless the United States of America. Stay tuned. The lines will stay up. Keep donating. Thank you.